State, you may call your next witness. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, I'm assigned to the bicycle unit. How long have you been with JSO? About 23 years. Was all that time on patrol? No, I spent four years in the jail, and I've been on the street for about 19 years. I want to direct your attention to the night of January 29th, 2016. Were you on duty that night? Yes, ma'am. Uh, were you on a bicycle that night, or were you in your patrol vehicle? I was actually in my car. Um, around 6.30 p.m. that night, were you dispatched to UF Health in reference to a shooting victim? Yes. Do you now know that victim was Ada McClendon? Yes, ma'am. Why were you dispatched? Uh, originally, we were dispatched there to uh, check on the status of the victim. Um, and what else did you do when you got there? Uh, well, we went inside and, and got the status and relayed that to the chain of command. And then we were instructed to uh, secure the vehicle, to assist with securing the vehicle. And when you say the vehicle, whose vehicle was that? Uh, it was the victim's vehicle that was driven to Shands. Did you speak with any witnesses at the hospital? No, ma'am. Okay. Where was the vehicle parked? It was parked in the ambulance entrance um, uh, to the emergency room. It's in the back of the hospital where all the, emergency, uh, where all the ambulances pull in. And when you got there to secure the vehicle, was the vehicle already being secured by someone else? Uh, Officer Hank was there with his recruit. What does it mean to secure a vehicle? We had to be sure that n nobody else was going to tamper with the vehicle, touch it, go inside of it, uh, disturb any of the evidence. What was the condition of the vehicle when you arrived? Uh, there was multiple gunshot uh, bullet holes in the car. Uh, the rear window was smashed out, and the left, the left rear tire was all shredded. It looked like somebody had drove on it when it was flat, and it was heavily damaged. One moment. Can you see the screen next to you, sir? I do have a screen up here. Okay. Uh, sir, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 167. Uh, what is this a photo of? This is the victim's vehicle parked in the ambulance entrance behind Shands. And was that how it uh, was parked when you got there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what about this photo? What do you see in here? Uh, I'm looking at the, the tire that's shredded. Okay. Uh, this is uh, States 168. Um, were the doors open like that when you got there? Yes, ma'am. I'm now showing you States Exhibit 169. Uh, this is a view of the passenger side of the vehicle. Is that how the car appeared when you were there that night, sir? Yes, ma'am. I'm now showing you State's Exhibit 172. Uh, what is this a photo of? Uh, well, the, the baby seat in the back seat. And if you look at the top right, you can see where the rear uh, window is smashed out. Now showing you State's 173. Uh, is this a close-up of the tire? Is that how it appeared to you that night, sir? Yes, ma'am. And I finally uh, states 173. Uh, is this how the back windshield was when you got there? Yes, ma'am. Officer Olch, uh, did you stay there with the vehicle until it was eventually moved? I did. Did you see anyone go near, touch, or tamper with the vehicle? No. Uh, the only thing that happened was the... Um, the evidence technician took the pictures, but nobody touched the vehicle. The pictures that we just saw? The pictures you just saw, yes. How was the vehicle eventually moved? It was moved by a wrecker, flatbed wrecker. And where was it taken? It was taken to the um, evidence warehouse on Haines Street, the JSO evidence warehouse. Did you follow the wrecker to the warehouse? We did, yes. Why did you do that? Uh, to maintain um, the security of the vehicle, the chain of custody. And did it get to the JSO warehouse safely? It did. Who took possession of the vehicle at the warehouse? Uh, evidence technician, uh, Detective Whittlesey, took control of the vehicle. Did you have any other involvement in this case? Uh, well, later on we did some neighborhood canvassings, but I never spoke to any witness. Nothing further, Your Honor. Cross.
No girls. That's right. May this witness be excused then? Yes, sir. All right, officer, you're excused. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. You may call your next witness state. Yes, ma'am, you may. Will you please introduce yourself to the jury? I'm Detective Shannon Fister. Where are you employed? I'm currently employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. In what capacity? I'm currently assigned to the crime scene unit. How long have you been with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? With the Sheriff's Office, I've been 21 years. And how long have you been in the crime scene unit? 10 years. Are you what is considered a major crime scene investigator? Yes, ma'am, I am. Can you explain to the members of the jury what that means? What a major crime scene detective is, is when it's had the experience, taken the classes, and, and been to enough cases to be lead. Um, usually the first year that you're on, you're handling just burglaries and batteries and some robberies to work your way up to being able to handle the major cases, such as homicides. And so the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office does consider a major case a homicide, is that right? Yes, ma'am. What sort of um, specialized training have you had to become a major crime scene investigator? I have an associate's in science degree in evidence technology, which in today's terms is crime scene work. Um, I've taken trajectory classes. I've taken a class in blood analysis reconstruction classes, on-the-job training where a more senior detective trains us on how to perform certain processes. Okay, and do you keep up to date in your field as well? Yes, ma'am. We have monthly roll call training that we do. Approximately how many homicide scenes or major case scenes um, have you investigated? Over my 21-year career, it's been hundreds. Were you on duty on January 29, 2016? Yes, I was. Were you um, the lead crime scene detective in the case involving the death of Aiden McClendon? Yes, I was. And just to give these juries an overview, um, did your work span days? Yes, ma'am. Multiple scenes? Yes, ma'am. And working through the warehouse and other places like that? Yes, ma'am. I worked directly on this case between the scenes and the warehouse for seven straight days. As a lead crime scene detective, do you also work with a team of other detectives to help you complete your work? Yes, we do. We work as a team. Um, the more eyes on something, the better. I could walk by something, not see something. My partner will come right behind me, and he'll see something because I might look this direction. So we work as a team so we don't miss anything. And what are your duties um, at a major case such as a homicide? Being the lead crime scene detective, it's my responsibility to make sure the scene is processed correctly. I give direction to the individuals working with me on what task I need them to do, such as searching with metal detectors, searching, you know, a brush, um, picking up evidence, sealing evidence. So I'm the one that actually has the other detectives do their specific task. And do you also participate in it as well? Yes, I do. I asked you earlier whether you were on duty on January 29th. Did you ultimately get dispatched to um, the scene in this particular case? Yes, ma'am. On your way, and by the scene, I mean 710 Steering Street, um, did you get diverted somewhere? I was advised while I was en route to the scene that the victim had shown up in a vehicle at UF Health, so I responded there first. Okay. Um, when you got to UF Health, what did you find? When I got there, I observed a white Toyota Corolla parked in the ambulance bay. And tell the members of the jury what you did when you arrived and you saw the car parked as you've described. The first thing I do is I take photographs of how the vehicle is upon my arrival. I don't touch the vehicle. I don't open doors. I want to photograph it exactly as it was when I got there. And that's the first thing I do is I, I photograph it as is. Okay. Yeah, I publish some photographs. Yes, ma'am, you may. All right. Detective, I'm showing you what's been admitted in as State's Exhibit 167. Um, is that the way that you found the vehicle? Yes, ma'am, it is. Are you the one that took these photographs? Yes, I am. 
States Exhibit 168. What portion of the car is that? That is the driver's side of the vehicle. Did you um, open those doors or do anything to the vehicle prior to this photograph? No, ma'am. That's how the vehicle was when I arrived. States Exhibit 169, is that the passenger side of that vehicle? Yes, ma'am, it is. States Exhibit 170, what is this? That is the driver's compartment. States Exhibit 171, what is this a photograph of? That is the rear passenger seat, and you can see the car seat on the rear passenger side. And states is at 172. Is that a close-up of the car seat as it appeared at the hospital when you arrived? Yes, ma'am, it is. States exhibit 173. What is this a photograph of? That is the shredded rear driver's side tire. And you can see where a tire, the, the black marks on the quarter panel there, you can see where the tire, as it was shredding, it was hitting the side of the car. States, that should be 174, I apologize. Um, States exhibit 174, what is this? That is the rear window of the Toyota Corolla in the ambulance bay, and you can see that the glass is shattered and on the rear deck. So you indicated that you had been diverted to UF Health and you took those photographs, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then, so did you then make your way to Spearing Street? Yes, ma'am. Did you do something before that? Prior to responding to Spearing Street, I closed the doors. I sealed them with evidence tape, um, had a crime scene detective already at the warehouse, and then I had patrol officers follow to maintain chain of custody to the warehouse. And then Detective Whittlesey, who was at the warehouse, secured it into our warehouse. Explain to the members of the jury um, why you decided to then transport that vehicle from where it was to the warehouse? We want to process a vehicle, especially one of this magnitude, in a very controlled environment. In the middle of an ambulance bay where there's people walking, ambulance is still bringing patients in and out. We're only we're securing a good portion of their ambulance bay. So we want to take it to a secure location where we can take our time instead of having to work around other ambulances coming in with patients. At the warehouse, I'm able to take my time and go, in this case, one bullet hole at a time, one process at a time, one section of the car at a time, instead of having to, to hurry up to process it there on the scene where something could likely be missed, trying to hurry up so the ambulances have their bay back. Okay. Before you left the hospital, did you collect um, any clothing in this case? Yes, ma'am. I collected Aiden's clothes from the emergency room pediatric area. And then later on, um, after you collected his clothing, um, did you spread it out so the photographs could be taken of it? Yes, I did. And explain to the members of the jury why you had to wait until later. Uh, I couldn't process it right there. I still had a scene to process. These clothes were unfortunately saturated with blood, so they were placed in a dryer so they could dry a little bit while I processed the scene. Uh, I wanted to get the scene processed, collect that evidence, in case we have a storm come through, evidence can be just destroyed by rain coming through. So I wanted to get to that first. The shirt and the condition of the shirt wasn't going to change, besides it being wet or dry, wasn't going to change while I processed that scene. Okay. If I may publish some more photographs. You may, yes, ma'am. Showing you States Exhibit 293. Um, yes, ma'am. That is our, our blood room in our, in our office, and those are the two patient bags that I collected Aiden's clothes in. Yes, ma'am. 294, is that a close-up of the identification of those particular bags? Yes, ma'am. It indicates that hospital staff put Aiden McClendon on that hospital bag, indicating that that's his property that's in there. Showing you states at 295, um, what is that? That is a photograph of his tennis shoes, his socks, and his pants. Showing you 296. That is the rear left flank of his, where his pants are right here, and you can see blood saturation along the belt, belt loop of those pants. Okay, could you erase that for me? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Six Exhibit 297, what is this? That is Aiden's shirt and his T-shirt.
Yes, ma'am, you may. All right. I'm showing you what's been admitted into evidence. It's exhibit 358. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then also State's Exhibit 357. Do yes, you recognize those? Yes, ma'am. Those are the two shirts that I collected at U of, Health, U of Health in the pediatric emergency room. Okay, so at what we see in 297, now these two exhibits, 357 and then 358, I'm showing the jury, um, those are these clothes spread out. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you, um, may the witness step down for just a moment? She may. You states exhibit 358. Um, you have, is this um, an artifact from you? Yes, that's an scale that we placed up to show the size of an object. Um, and in this instance, I'm showing the size of an object. Okay. And that would be in what portion of the shirt? <coughs> right here, on the right side of the shirt. Actually, if someone was wearing it, yes. would that be the left side? Yes, sorry. The front, on the back side. Okay. And now I'm showing the front of the shirt without um, the measurement sticker. Was it apparent that um, medical personnel had cut it? Yes, Do you know that from your experience? Yes, sir. And so what you're marking with this sticker is the bullet hole that you saw on the back of that shirt? Yes, <laughs> Just a moment. Then I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 357. Can you orient the members of the jury why you have this particular sticker on the shirt? There's a, a hole here. And it's unknown if I'm looking if it's the actual bullet hole or it could be. It could be a little hole, or it could be where they cut. In this instance, I'm not going to determine that. Okay, but you did mark it. But I did mark it because it is a hole. It's not cut straight up the top, but I wouldn't put one straight up the top where they cut it up to the bottom of the hole. And that would have been on the lower right side of this shirt? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Maybe you could just show the members of the jury on here. Welcome. Okay. Show them what you're referring to. There's more of this area right here. It's on the lower right portion. Okay. Showing the back of this chart, you have another measurement. This is a little hole in the back. It's consistent in the same location as the white tank top that you saw earlier. It's a little bit harder to see in the black shirt, so walk down here and show them. After you collected the clothing um, for Aiden McClendon, where did you go? I, after I collected his clothing, I responded to the scene at 710 Sparing Street. Is that located here in Duval County, Florida? Yes, ma'am. It's right off the Matthews Expressway, right here in the middle. That is the Matthews Expressway. You can see the stadium in the upper left-hand corner. Um, the Matthews Bridge is just near there. And along the Matthews Expressway, if you come down this turn right here, you can see our crime scene van parked in this area. And this right here is Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. Okay. Thank you. I've got some stuff blocking, so if you could erase that for me. Yeah. Thanks. Showing you State's Exhibit 2, what is this a photograph of? In this photograph, you can see the crime scene tapes right here maintain the security van. And then you have our two crime scene vans here. And then you have Aiden's great-grandmother's residence here. And this is Albert Street right here. And Spearing Street runs this way. OK. Thank you. State's Exhibit 7. Tell that, us what this is. That is Albert Street. 
And you can see this is the patrol car that you saw earlier right here. And this is the Matthews Expressway where they're coming off. And right here on the left-hand side of your screen is Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. Okay. And now you indicated that you, I said, where do you start? Um, is this essentially where you started in this, on Albert Street, some here in this location? Yes, ma'am. That's where the, the casings were found when we arrived. Okay. Thank you. If you could clear that. Showing you State's Exhibit 8, is this a front view of um, Aiden McClendon's great-grandmother's house? Yes, ma'am, it is. And I'm sorry? No. You were going to say something? I was going to say it's the, the roadways, Albert, and then the front. Okay. And that we have the sign here, over here in the corner, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you could clear it. Thanks. Showing you State's Exhibit 9. Um, the front of the house runs along Albert. Um, was there that dirt path in front of the house? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you circle that for the jurors? Dirt path. It's like a makeshift driveway where it's not a concrete driveway like you would have in a lot of residents. <laughs> this is actually, it was like they've made a driveway to get to the residence. Okay. Thank you. State's Exhibit 10, what perspective are we looking at here? In this perspective, I'm looking towards Albert Street. To my back is actually the residence of the Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. And you can see the, this is Albert. You can see that cone, the city cone that was there. And you can see the dirt driveway, makeshift dirt driveway there. Okay, could you clear that? <laughs> Just to give that jurors an idea, where were those shell casings located where you started? Show casings were in the road right there. Okay, thank you. Showing you State's Exhibit 3, um, this house that we've been talking about, 710 Spearing Street, um, did it have this, these row of houses behind it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, did this shooting impact those houses as well? Yes, ma'am, it did. It impacted the house directly north right here, and it also impacted this house directly north of that one. It actually, some of the projectiles actually um, perforated three houses. Okay, could you clear that? All right. State's Exhibit 6, is this... Um, I guess maybe a better view of those houses that we were seeing were impacted by the shooting. Yes, ma'am. As well as the one 710 Spearing Street. This house, this house, and then here's Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. Okay, thank you. Showing you State's Exhibit 11, what view are we at here? In this photograph, I'm in front of uh, 716 Spearing Street, which is right here. And this is Aiden's grandmother's, great grandmother's residence. And this is actually a concrete driveway for 710 Spearing Street right here. It's separated by a metal, about three, four foot fence. And that's actually the concrete driveway where you would park your vehicle. Okay, thank you. State's Exhibit 12, is that a better photograph of that? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 13, what is this? This is the concrete, or correction, this is the dirt driveway area that you saw in some of those original photos. This is the front porch entrance to the front porch for Aiden grandmother's house, great grandmother's house. And it's a path, concrete path that leads to the concrete driveway. Okay. Thank you. State's Exhibit 15, is that a better view of that pathway in between the house and the side yard? Yes, ma'am. Can you clear that? State's Exhibit 16, what is this a photograph of? This is a photograph of the 9mm casings that were in the roadway and the side of the road in front of 710 Spearing Street, which is Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. Now, this photograph is obviously at night, and the other ones have been during the day. We talked about it earlier. This investigation stands... Many days, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, this photograph was just taken on January 29, 2016, the night when you got there. Yes, ma'am. That's This is the original night after we located the 
casings in the roadway after we photographed them. Then we place the evidence placards in front of those casings. And then we take another photograph for a visual representation where these casings are in relation to the driveway to the residence. Okay, so the placards you place there so that it can give you a reference of where these items of evidence that you find are? Yes, ma'am. Um, is it usual for you to arrive well after an incident has occurred? In, the, in instance like this where someone, where the victim has been transported to a hospital, yes. Um, on most scenes, we like to get there before it's even been disturbed, where I can see what my scene looks like. In this case, I have the faith in the officers that I was working with that they would maintain the integrity of the scene while I could go to the hospital and take care of that portion of the evidence. That way I know what Aiden's car looked like at the hospital, where I could pick up Aiden's clothes, where I can see, you know, to photograph a victim. And in this instance, I did not photograph a victim because he was in surgery. So I like to be able to be a part of every part of my case, and sometimes I can't, and that's where you have faith in the detectives that you're working with. Okay. Um, going to State's Exhibit 17, can you tell the members of the jury what they're looking at? This is a close-up of the eight 9 millimeter casings that were in, on the road on Albert Street in front of Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. Um, shell casings, do they stay, remain consistent? That is, do you keep the same number that you have on the placard once you collect them and put them on the packaging as well? Yes, ma'am. 6 is at 18. Is that a close-up of what? That is a close-up of number one that we have identified as number one, and it's just the first one we come to. It's no, There's no real it's kind of random, whatever we come to first, we put one and we try to go number two, number three behind it. In this photograph, it's just a close-up of the casing in the roadway with the number one placard. Okay, and so this is evidence marker number one. Is this a nine millimeter shell casing? Yes, it is. State's exhibit 19, is this a nine millimeter shell casing? Yes, it is. At, and then to give the perspective of where one was, you stepped up a little bit in this photograph, State's Exhibit 20, um, where there are 9-millimeter shell casings even into the dirt um, of where 710 Spearing Street is. Yes, ma'am. Now, just because you find the shell casings there, okay, does that mean that's exactly where the person was when they shot? No. Okay, why is that? Especially in this instance, you've got concrete. When the, when the the casing is ejected from the ejection port of a firearm. It hit, hits concrete. It doesn't just stop. It bounces. It slides. Um, people can kick it. Cars can be driving by. And if you're in a moving vehicle, that also changes the general area where it's going to land. But you can't say every casing that comes out of that firearm does not land on the exact same spot. It'll land here, it could land five feet from there. It just depends on how much skip, how much bounce that it would get, per se. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go through these. Six Exhibit 21, 9 millimeter shell casing. Yes, ma'am. Six Exhibit 22, does that give the reference point between these casings? Yes, ma'am. Six Exhibit 23, is that a close-up of a 9 millimeter shell casing at evidence marker 4? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 24, is that a close-up of the 9mm shell casing evidence marker number 5? Yes, ma'am. Showing a perspective shot between 6 and 7, does that show the location of where they were found? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 26, evidence marker 6, does it, is that a 9mm shell casing? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 27, is that a close view of a 9mm shell casing? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 28, is that a perspective between 3 and 8 that, that was found in the dirt? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 29, is that another 9mm shell casing that was found? Yes, ma'am. At evidence marker number 8? Yes, ma'am. When, after you take your photographs of the <coughs> shell casings, do you collect them? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, how do you go about collecting them? Wearing clean gloves and with, with tweezers, pick them up and we place them into a coin envelope and then we seal that envelope. Then they're placed in a larger envelope and then placed into the property room. You may. I'm 
I'm going to hand these to you. Hold on. You can hold this, and I'll just go through these. On this um, exhibit, we have evidence markers one through eight that we've seen through photograph. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And are these the packaging for it? Yes, ma'am. That you recognize the packaging in your handwriting? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. And I'm, for the record, I'm showing the witness what has been marked for identification as State's Exhibit 2U, 2T, 2S, 2R, 2Q, 2P, 2O, and 2N. Do you recognize your seals on those items? Yes, these are the evidence seals that Detective Whittlesey and I sealed the evidence. It's actually Detective Whittlesey who was one of the guys working with me. Um, we sealed them together, and he actually signed the envelopes in the back. And, but the front is my handwriting. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that back. Hold on just a second. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Thank on top of the glass. The glass was on top of the dirt. Okay. And you actually take your time to pick up all the pieces of glass there? Yes, ma'am. You're on Manfred. You may. Showing you uh, what's been entered into evidence in State's Exhibit 308 and 309. That should be evidence marker 9 and 10, what you collected. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You recognize those? Yes, ma'am, I do. Moving on to State's Exhibit 35, is that the view from um, the side driveway out to where we've been looking at before? Yes, ma'am. It's a different angle. Um, I'm actually standing on the concrete slab for the, the driveway on the side of the house. These are the steps right here where I located the glass. And the tree trunk is right in this area. It's hard to see it with the foliage covering that photograph, but I'm looking towards that direction and Albert Street is out here. You can see the crime scene tape where Albert Street is. Okay, thanks. State's Exhibit 36, 11 and 12, what are those? This is the concrete driveway. Um, number 12 is a cell phone. Number 11, I'd have to refer to my report to. Is that more glass? Yes, yes it is. That's more broken glass. Same consistency as what was on the front steps and the same consistency as the glass that was in the rear window of Aiden's mother's vehicle. Okay. Is that close-up of 37? Yes, ma'am. And that's evidence marker 11? Yes, ma'am. You can see the shattered shards of glass in different locations on the concrete driveway. Yes, ma'am. For this witness, you may. Thank you. Um, 
State's Exhibit 310 is that evidence marker 11, the same glass that you create collected from what we see pictured in 37. Yes, it is. Thank you. State's Exhibit 38, is that a close-up of the phone that was at the scene, evidence yes. marker 12? Yes, ma'am, it is. State's Exhibit 39, um, State's, I'm sorry, your evidence marker 13, what was that? I'd have to refer to my report to remember 13, I sure. apologize. I can probably go to the next picture. Okay. It was a piece of paper that we found at the scene that didn't know if it had anything to do with this case, but anything when we're searching, anything that could potentially be part of our case, we're collecting, we're marking, and, and moving forward. Um, this one, remember, it was a part of like a drink, the cover, the sticker, it's on the front of like a, a beer bottle, for example. Okay, so is it, um, do you just collect everything that seems obvious, or do you collect things that may not be as obvious, just in an abundance of caution? Yes, ma'am. All right. And I'm showing you State's Exhibit 311 in evidence. Is that the other side of evidence marker 13? Yes, ma'am. It's the other side. It's actually a vodka bottle sticker that goes on the glass. Did you have any idea if this had anything to do with this case? No, ma'am. And when we say evidence marker, I, let me ask you on this exhibit, um, when you say evidence marker and you see EV13, is that what you're referring to? Yes, ma'am. We indicate on the envelope what the item is in the envelope, and then if it has an evidence marker, we mark it somewhere on the envelope, and so we know that is EV13, which is the, the stickered from the beer, the liquor bottle. State's Exhibit um, 41, what is that? That is evidence marker number 14. I believe that's the broken glass. It's the same consistency as the window, rear window of Aiden's mother's vehicle. The same consistency as the glass on the steps, same consistency as the glass that was on the concrete driveway. All right, and is this um, Spearing Street? Yes, ma'am. Can you raise that for me? Yeah. State's Exhibit 42, is that a close-up of that glass? Yes, ma'am. That's a close-up of the glass on the roadway. Yes, ma'am. And State's Exhibit 43? That... <laughs> That is some broken glass, and that's actually a sticker for apartment complex that the glass on it is the same consistency as a rear window of a vehicle. You can see the red lines for the rear window defrost, so it's the same consistency as the window on Aiden's mother's car on the steps on the driveway and in the previous photograph as the glass on the road. Okay. State's Exhibit 44, what is that? It's a bullet fragment. Where was that found? That was found on Spearing Street, just north of Aiden Grandmother's residence in that concrete driveway, as if something was going northbound on that road. It was working its way up the roadway. It wasn't all right in front of the driveway. Everything was working its way north. So that tiny fragment, you all were able to find that? Yes, ma'am. That's where the three eyes come in handy. Where I go through, we do searches, line searches up and down the road. I go and do my search, and my partner goes and does his search, and then the, we had three of us on this case. So then he did it, so there's three eyes. It's better than just me searching the area, because somebody might find, like I said, testified earlier, might find something that I might have missed. Where That's why I have my partners go behind me. State's Exhibit um, 45, do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am, that is a projectile that was on the roadway on Spearing Street. Do you have any idea if this had anything to do with it? Not at that time, no, ma'am. 
it appears to be somewhat damaged. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to show you Justin Intervent's Exhibit 316. Is that the projectile that you found that's pictured in State's Exhibit 45? Yes, ma'am. That is uh, evidence 17 that we've indicated on the envelope as previous, and that's the same projectile that is here on the ground. Okay. State's Exhibit 46, what is this? That's showing evidence placards 15 and 18 in the roadway. Showing you a close view of 47. What is that? 18 is some wood or bark, same consistency as that tree trunk that I showed you, or that she showed you earlier, where it had that chunk of the wood missing from the tree trunk. And State's Exhibit 48, what is that? That is a photograph of the concrete driveway for 710 Spearing Street, Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. And we've right already here's... talked about 11 and 12. Yes, ma'am. What is 19? You want me to get it? Yes. State That's Exhibit right. 49. Sorry, I apologize. No problem. Um, 19 is a bullet fragment that we found in the driveway. Okay. That looks pretty damaged. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. All right. May I approach? You may. Showing you what's in the internet, State Exhibit 317. Um, do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. Um, as indicated, evidence 19. And that's the same bullet fragment that is on the driveway of 710 Spearing Street. Okay. Um, and it's, it's pretty flat. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. It's thin. State's Exhibit 50. That is uh, Spearing Street in the concrete. Okay. That's in front of 16. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> number 20 is a unknown projectile that we found in the roadway in front of 716 Spearing Street, which is the first house directly north of Aiden's great grandmother's residence. Okay, and was that collected? Yes, ma'am, it was. State's Exhibit 52, what are we looking at? This is the front of Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. The steps that I showed you earlier with the broken glass is right in this area. Um, and then these are the support pillars to the front porch. Okay. Were there, was there evidence of bullet strikes on that um, area of the house? Yes, ma'am, there was. Can you circle them for the jurors? There was some here. There was one in the... The pillar that was over. I think it's, it it's kind of yeah, shadowed. It's, it's a dark photo. It's, it's dark, so my flash and the concentration was on the this area. Um, that's why it's a little dark. But this is actually a perforating bullet, stri bullet strike into the support pillar that's right here. Okay. Can you clear that? Showing you State's Exhibit 53, um, we have the measurement um, tape that you have on there. Is that marking bullet hole A and B? Yes, those are two bullet strikes in the front porch area, that white section that separates the porch from the outside. Were you able to find any fragments associated with those two bullet strikes? We found some fragments on that concrete slab that's directly in front of the, this area. State's Exhibit 54, is that a close-up of bullet strike A? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 55, is that a close-up of bullet strike B? Yes, ma'am. Showing you State's Exhibit 56, is that bullet strike C? Yes, ma'am. And is that on the pillar of the house? Yes, ma'am, it is. Um, can you clear that for me? State's Exhibit 57, if there appears to be a hole, did you go any further in trying to get the projectile out of there? No, ma'am. This... This uh, is the support post for the, the second story front porch. It is actually a hollow concrete pillar, and I didn't want to ruin the integrity of the porch above me to obtain that projectile. Okay. Showing you State's Exhibit 58, are these bullet hole D and then bullet hole E on that wall area um, 
after you get up the stairs? Yes, ma'am. The stairs are right here as you would walk up the stairs. And then these are the, the first two bullet holes that I came in contact on that front facing wall of 710 Spearing Street. Okay. State Exhibit 59, is that a close-up of D? Yes, ma'am. And that's the entrance? Yes, ma'am. That's where it, it perforated into the, the bedroom. It's actually a bedroom on the other side of that wall. It perforated into that bedroom from Spearing Street towards the north. Spearing Street's on the south towards the house. Everything went from south to north or from the roadway towards the residence. As we were looking at the rest of these photographs, um, how are you able to tell the difference between an entrance and an exit as it relates to trajectory? If you look at this photograph, you can see how the, the divot or the hole, they're going inward. Where on the exit, they're going to the shards of wood are going to go more towards out. So you're not going to have an entrance that's going to have all the shards coming this way towards you. When the bullet goes in, it actually creates a hole and a, and a divot into it. And then when it comes out, it's pushing it outwards. Okay. State's Exhibit um, 70, is this like an overall of all the bullet exits on the other side of 710 Spearing Street? Yes, ma'am. Um, so we have... D, I believe, mm -hmm. E, and what are the other two in the window sills? I'd have to look at the close-up okay. of the photograph. We'll I apologize. Can you clear that? Yep. And Stacy's in at 60. What is this a photograph of? That is a photograph of place trajectory rides. This is the back side of the house or the north side of the residence. And this is where the projectile has exited the residence in that bedroom. And I've placed what's called dowel rods and a laser on the end of the dowel rod to assist me in locating where that projectile went once it exited 710 Spearing Street. Okay. Is that a close-up of D, State's Exhibit 61? Yes, ma'am. That's the, the laser and the rod in place in that, that hole. Okay. State's Exhibit 62, is that a photo of where that rod led to? Yes, ma'am. It the led to side. the side of 716 Spearing Street which is directly behind Aiden grandmother, great grandmother's residence. Okay. State's Exhibit 63, is that a close-up of the entrance? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 64, is that the interior of um, 716 16. Spearing Street? Yes, ma'am. That's where it's come all the way through. Seven, it went from 710 Spearing Street through that residence into 716 Spearing Street. State's Exhibit um, 65, again, it was a laser placed on that mark, and then it went to this location inside that home. Yes, ma'am. If you look in the center of that circle, you can see the green dot of the laser from the trajectory rod in the previous one that you saw in the, the wall, and it's, it ended up coming right to that frame of the doorway of 716, 716 Spearing Street. Okay. State's Exhibit 66, is that a close-up of that area? Yes, ma'am. I'm moving closer to it. You see where the damage it is in the paint and the wood. Okay. State's Exhibit 67, is that even closer um, shot of bullet hole D? Yes, ma'am. Did you all get a projectile out of that? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 68, is that a photograph of the projectile that you all dug out of that um, door frame? Yes, ma'am. That's a, an evidence scale that we have, and that is the projectile. And on the envelope that you see there is the packaging envelope I used to place it into the property room. On it, I've indicated it came from 716 Spearing Street in the door frame, and it's originally from bullet hole D. And did you collect it and then write the same markings um, that we've been talking about earlier? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat>
Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, is that what we see pictured in State's Exhibit 68? Yes, ma'am, it is. State's Exhibit 74, is that the interior of the trash can? Yes, ma'am, I've opened the lid and placed a scale where it exited the trash can. And you can actually see in this photograph where it's coming outward or into the garbage can, indicating that the projectile originated from the outside of the garbage can in. So that's a good representation of what I was explaining earlier. Okay. Stacey exhibit 75, is that a carpet that was hit inside the trash can? Yes, ma'am. You can actually see that there is a bullet hole in the carpet. Okay. Stacey exhibit 76, is that a close view? Yes, ma'am. Close up view of the bullet hole in the carpet. Stacey exhibit 77, is that the exit from the interior of the trash can? Yes, ma'am. Stacey exhibit 78, is that the exit of the trash can? Yes, ma'am. Stacey exhibit 79, is that a close up? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 80, I want to go to um, this area here. Um, was there a bullet strike in the glass of that residence? Yes, ma'am, there was. Can you erase that? Yeah. States Exhibit 81, is that a close-up of that bullet hole? Yes, yes ma'am, you can see that it's a perforating bullet hole in the window glass, and then it also struck the, the paper. He had, he had like a paper window shade inside the residence. Stacey exhibit 82, is that a close-up of that? Yes, ma'am. That's G. I'm sorry, bullet hole G. Yes, ma'am. Stacey exhibit 83, is that the shade that you were referring to in the bullet strike up at the top? Yes, ma'am. That's the paper shade. Okay, paper shade, I'm sorry. Stacey exhibit, can you um, erase that? Okay, is that um, the end of it or the next strike um, that you saw related to bullet hole G? Yes, ma'am. This is a like a front front Florida room of the res of that residence of 716 Spearing Street. The projectile traveled through the glass, through that window shade, through that room, and then struck the area right here. And you can see the the divot and the where it struck there. That's. Stacey exhibit um, 85, do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. What is it? And this is that window seal right under the final strike for that bullet, bullet hole that we were talking about that went through the, the window glass and the window shade. This is the window ledge where we found a unknown bullet fragment on that window seal across that bedroom or that Florida room. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. This is the envelope that I wrote on and then the initials on the evidence seal that Detective Whittlesey did. And then that's the same unknown projectile or fragment that is on the window seal here. It's the same one. Okay. And this was collected Yes, ma'am. The house directly behind 710 Spearing Street. This is 17, 716 Spearing Street. Showing you um, State's Exhibit 86. What is this? That is evidence marker number 21. That is in the Florida room of 716 Spearing Street. The dog kennel for orientation is right here. I've covered him up because he was barking. Okay. Erase that for me. And then State's Exhibit 87, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. That is evidence marker 21. That was an unknown projectile that we found on the floor of the Florida room. All right. I'm showing you what's been entered as State's Exhibit 319. Do you recognize that? 
Yes, ma'am. That's the, the envelope with our name and ID numbers on it, and that is the projectile that was on the floor of 716 Spearing Street in the Florida room. Stacey's at 88. Um, you took a picture of your hand with a sticker on it. Yeah, I was getting ready to take a picture of the projectile with the evidence scale next to it so you can see the orientation of the size. Okay. State's exhibit um, 89, um, is that where bullet hole H enters? Yes, ma'am. It's on the top, top frame. Okay. If you could raise that. State's exhibit 90, is that where it came through the house um, in the interior of the home? Yes, ma'am. That's where it came through the house and that's in the, still in the interior of the residence. With the, you can see the scale I put, because it was a larger hole, I actually placed the larger L scale that we carry for a more better re representation how large the hole is. State's Exhibit um, 91. This is the ceiling of 716 Spearing Street, where the projectile originated from this hole. It struck and entered the ceiling area. Okay. And then State's Exhibit 92, I believe that was bullet hole E. Which we e yes, ma'am. That's the, the, the laser on it. Okay, sorry. State's mm -hmm. Exhibit 93, um, and I want to reference this. Is this the front of the house or the back of the house? That is the front of the house. And is that an entrance to bullet hole? Yes, ma'am. Okay. State's Exhibit 94, is that an entrance to bullet hole I? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 95, is that a close-up of I entrance? Yes, ma'am. That's a close-up of it. You can see the, the window screen, the bullet hole, and then in the curtains or shades in the back. Okay. State's Exhibit 96, is that the exit of yes, ma'am. I? That's on the back side of the residence. State's Exhibit 97, is that another entrance into the residence right next to it? Yes, ma'am. That is the entrance to 17, 716 Spearing Street. That's uh, the window. You can see the, the hole with our, our evidence scale there. Okay. State's Exhibit 898, is that a close view? Yes, ma'am. It's a close-up of I that originated from 710 Spearing Street, where it traveled through 710 Spearing Street and then traveled into 716 Spearing Street. State's Exhibit 99, is that a um, view of the entrance interior? Yes, ma'am. That's the inside of the residence looking towards the window. Um, you can see their shades, and then this is the outer wall, but the window is in here. Okay. State's Exhibit 100, is that the next strike inside that home? Yes, ma'am. That's I've actually turned, and it's continuing its path north towards the, the next residence. But that is the same room. All I've done is turn my back towards the window, and I'm photographing towards the, the next wall of the residence. And in the curtain, oops, sorry. And in the curtain here is where it continued on and then struck and traveled through the curtain that was covering, you know, separating two rooms of the residence. All right. Stacey's Exhibit 101, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. That's the, where the bullet ended that curtain that separated those two rooms. State's Exhibit 102, um, is that the continuation of I? Yes, ma'am. With the dowel rod? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 103, is that a continuation of I? Yes, ma'am. Into a shower? Into the, the shower tiled area. State's Exhibit 104, is that a close view of this exit into the shower? Yes, ma'am. That's where it actually perforated into the shower wall between where entered was between the exterior of the residence and that shower wall, so it's that, that voided area and that's in the in the shower. State's Exhibit 105, is that the um, termination of I? Yes, ma'am. It's the dowel rod in the hole. Did you dig through their tile to get that projectile? No, I did not destroy the shower of the occupant that lived in there to, to obtain it. State's Exhibit 106, is that a close view of it? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 107, is this J? Yes, ma'am. Is that the... 710 Spearing Street? Yes, ma'am. That's that front window near the porch, or the steps that lead up to the front porch. That is that window, that first window that, you, that you're coming to. 
States Exhibit 108, is that a close view? Yes, ma'am, that's where the projectile traveled through into the interior of that bedroom. Okay. States Exhibit 109, is that the exit? Yes, ma'am. All right. States Exhibit 110, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 111, even closer so you can actually see that it's an exit? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 112, is that the entrance into 716 Spearing Street? Yes, ma'am. Seven, States Exhibit 113, is that the interior of that bullet? Sorry. Yes, ma'am. That's the interior of a center room in that residence. You can see the dowel rod. It's, I've placed it through the house. So when I came into the house, I could see the dowel rod had come all the way through. Okay. States Exhibit 114, is that the continuation up here? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is that the kitchen area? The home? That is the kitchen area, yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 115, um, did, is that the laser site? Yes, ma'am. You can see the, the laser light in that plastic bowl that was on top of the cabinetry in the kitchen. It was on the furthest north wall of that kitchen. All right. States Exhibit 116, is that the hole through the plastic wear that they had up there? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 117, is that a view of the termination point of that projectile? Yes, ma'am. When I moved the plastic bowl that was on top of those cabinetry, I found the projectile embedded into the wall. Yes, ma'am. It's uh, the envelope for the projectile that you see in the photograph here. It's the envelope that I created that night with uh, Detective Whittle's signature on her seal. Okay. I got it. Okay. Thank you. And the, the 716, this was recovered at 716? Yes, ma'am. 716 Spring Street is the, the house directly north or behind 710 Spearing Street. That projectile traveled through one house and then the next house to get to the furthest north wall of the house next door, which was 716 Spearing Street. Okay. And 118, is that a close view of how you collected it? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 119, um, is there a bullet strike here? Is yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 120, is that a close view of K? Yes, ma'am. Is that an entrance? It's, or it, a bullet strike, I should say. It's where it actually struck but did not perforate all the way into the residence. Okay. And States Exhibit 121, what is that? That's an evidence placard right underneath where that hole is in the residence. And there is a projectile that we found underneath in the same area of where the uh, hole is. States Exhibit 122, um, is that the projectile that was located near that bullet strike? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 123, is that it collected? Yes, ma'am. You can see the evidence placard in the background for number 24, and that's the, the unknown projectile that we found on the, that I found on the dirt right underneath where that strike was. Exhibit 124, is that a bullet strike in the screen of what residence? 720 Spearing Street. If you're looking at the houses, you got Aiden's great-grandmother's residence. We have 716 Spearing Street that we just talked about, and then 720 Spearing Street. Okay. Six Exhibit 125, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. Six Exhibit um, 4, can you just circle on there where that residence is located, where that bullet strike is? That is 720 Spearing Street. Okay. States Exhibit 126, is that a front view of that residence? Yes, ma'am, indicating the, the address right here. Okay. States Exhibit 127, um, what, this hole, what is that? That is a bullet hole on the north, or correction, on the south side of 720 Spearing Street. And that is the interior Florida room here of that residence. Okay. States Exhibit 128. Is that a closer view of bullet strike L? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 129, um, did it actually enter into some furniture that was located near that window? 
Yes, ma'am. On the interior side of that porch, there was actually a tall dresser. State's Exhibit 130, is that an um, interior photo of that furniture? Correction, it was a bookcase. Okay. Um, and, then, and is that the area where the bullet exited? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 131, a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. You can see where the shards of the is coming outward into the room. So it okay. indicates that it came from outside the residence into that porch area. Now, this is the dowel rod we've seen before with the laser? Yes, ma'am. And that helped y'all follow it through? Yes, ma'am. That's State's Exhibit 132. 133, is that where the laser hit? And is this an interior closet? Yes. And then there's right. some hanging clothes and other items that belong to the, the homeowner. Okay. And then State's Exhibit 134, did it go through some other clothing? Yes, you can see where the projectile traveled through these. It's like it's a blue shirt like a dress shirt. Okay. State's Exhibit 135, um, did that go through a door frame? Yes, ma'am. That is, this is the front door here, and then it's skimmed through the, the wood frame that separates the front porch window from the front door. Okay. State's Exhibit 136, close view of that? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 137, the room where the projectile was recovered? Yes, ma'am. The bookcase is to my rear, and I'm looking towards the north, the, into the porch. State's Exhibit 138, um, I believe the projectile is here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. State's Exhibit 139, um, was that collected? Yes, ma'am, it was. State's Exhibit 140. Um, <laughs> Is that what we see pictured in State's Exhibit 140? Yes, ma'am. It's so, my handwriting on the front and the back of the envelope, and then that's the projectile that you see in the photograph. Why does it have confirmed underneath? When we were originally there the original night, we did not see a, another hole that was higher up. And when that was the only projectile I found on that front porch at the time, my partner, like I said, somebody coming behind me to see if they find something else, he found that higher hole that was a way above my head and we were able to determine that there was actually two perforating holes into that front porch area and so that's why this is confirmed where in the original night when I was there and photographed and collected I collected another projectile that I labeled as L it's actually was when we were able to do the trajectory on it when both of us looked at it it ended up that was M and not L Yes, ma'am. The house directly north of seven or two houses from seven ten Spearing Street. State's Exhibit one forty one. I'm sorry. Let me go back to five. Um, does this house seven sixteen have like this awning thing around it? Yes, ma'am. It does. Yes, ma'am. All right. Can you clear that? State's Exhibit 141, is that a closer view of that awning that we saw from overhead? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 142, is this bullet hole M? Yes, ma'am. That's the bullet hole M that I wasn't able to see at the, the original night that we were at the scene. Okay. State's Exhibit 143, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. Did it travel through the porch area, State's Exhibit 144? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 145 is at the exit of the porch area and into the second part of the awning. Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 146 is at the entrance into 720 Spearing Street, the next house over. Yes, ma'am. Seven, sorry, State's Exhibit 147 is at the entrance into that residence. Yes, ma'am. That's the bullet hole I said that I didn't see the, at the original when it was dark that night before. I didn't see that hole, and that's where we were able to determine M and L and confirm which projectile entered through L and which projectile entered through M. State's Exhibit 148, is that the interior of that home? Yes, ma'am. 
States Exhibit 166 is that that's the one that you said you labeled um, as bullet strike L, but it's actually M? Yes, ma'am. covered all of these by photograph and I just want to talk to you about the packaging okay yes, 13c um, which was then entered in is 315 13f um, which is 318 13p 328 and then 13j 322 do you recognize these yes ma'am those are the ones I collected from residents and we've seen all the photographs as it relates to all of those yes ma'am where these all were covered at or near the crime scene Exhibit 149. What is that? That is a, a concrete driveway of 710 Spearing Street, right here. Is that, that the following day when you could um, see a little bit better? Yes, ma'am. Okay, That's in the daylight. I'm sorry. What did you find? I found a Luke 22 is the an ammo paper from an ammo box. Okay, so give me just a second. Stacey's exhibit 150, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am, it's like the little corner of the ammo box. It's on the, if you're looking at the driveway, it's on the, the left-hand side of the driveway. The house would be here and then the driveway, and then the ammo box was in that foliage that you saw between the tree where the trunk was missing. That's that foliage area right there. I did not. Let me show you what's been entered as the exhibit 320. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. It's the piece of the ammo box that's depicted in the photograph here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Did you do that as an abundance of caution? Yes, ma'am. All right. States Exhibit um, 151. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. This is the front yard of 710 Spearing Street. Right in this area right here is that tree where that chunk of wood was missing. And this is the front porch of 710 Spearing Street. And then there's a shed. This is the northwest corner of the property. And right next to that shed, if we're looking at this photo to the left-hand side, um, was there some um, brush and trashy area? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit um, 152, um, what evidence marker is that? Can you see it? I'll go to the next one. This is working way our way into where this evidence mark, you're going to see it in a minute. That's looking through the yard all the way in that corner where that shed is. This is the area behind the shed area. Okay. So and was there a lot of debris and other trash yes, in that area? 
you can see that there's an old milk crate where the foliage is over on top of it and the leaves and then in the center you can see the the evidence marker right there okay and is that a states exhibit 153 is that another view in that same particular area yes that same tree here yes ma'am okay states exhibit 154 is that a closer view of um, what you found narrative evidence marker 23 yes ma'am this is the fence that separates 716 Spearing Street from 710 Spearing Street and this right here is a casing we found in right behind that shed area of that we were looking at from the front where I said the shed was in the far left hand corner this is directly behind that where there was a casing found <coughs> States Exhibit 155, is that a close view of that casing? Yes, ma'am. It's a 223 caliber casing. Um, based on your training and experience as a law enforcement officer, what type of firearms fire that kind of casing? This type of uh, casing is ejected from more of like a, a rifle. States Exhibit 156, is that a, the view of the head stamp? Yes, ma'am. Right. States Exhibit 157, again, is that the 116? Spearing Street? 716 Spearing 716 Street. 716 Spearing Street. Um, and 158, is that the alleyway that's along that? Yes, ma'am. This is 710 Spearing Street right here. That's that fence. This is the fence that separates the two residents. And this is the little path in between the house and the fence. Okay. And then um, as we go into these two areas on the side of 716 Spearing Street, did you find a casing there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is that Exhibit 25 that we have not talked about? Yes, ma'am. Six Exhibit 160, was it wedged in the dirt like that? Yes, ma'am. That's how it was when I found it. Do you have any idea if it has anything to do with this case? Uh, no, ma'am. Did you find any um, bullet holes going through from like 116 where you found this casing? going through 710 Spearing Street, out the street. I did not find any bullet holes in 710 Spearing Street that are from the area of 710, 710 Spearing Street. None of the projectiles or the bullet holes that I found came from the north to the south. Everything was from the south to the north. Okay. Basically from Spearing Street towards the north. Okay, so if you were stating where this particular casing was found and you just turn this way and like, let's say the shooter was shooting that way, you know, towards, what about? Spe that south, towards the stadium. Did you find any bullet holes or strikes consistent with that being involved? No, ma'am, I did not. I'm going to show you what's been introduced into evidence. It's exhibit 321 and 323. Um, 321 would be that casing that you found behind by the shed of 710. And then, what number is that? 323. Um, that's the casing that we're looking at in States Exhibit 160. Yes, ma'am. That's the casing. Okay. <coughs> in the same packaging that I collected it that day. Okay. Exhibit 162, is that the photograph of the head stamp? <coughs> yes, ma'am. What caliber does that indicate that it was? It's a 45. You okay? <coughs> yes, ma'am. <coughs> Stacy Exhibit 162. <coughs> All right, what are we looking at? And this, this is the tree where that trunk was missing out of the tree trunk. I apologize. As I was doing my final walk through the house or of the property and the scene, I looked up in this tree and I noticed a bullet hole in the tree. And this is the ladder for, so we can get up there. Okay. Six exhibit. Um, is that you documenting that bullet strike that you marked as evidence marker 26? Yes, ma'am. And then 164. 
It's a closer up view of the bullet hole in the tree trunk. And did you actually dig that bullet out? Yes, ma'am, we did. States exhibit 165, is that a photograph of the bullet? Yes, ma'am. Again, do you know what this had anything to do with this shooting that we have? At the time, no. Okay. Show me the exhibit 324. <coughs> is that what you collected that we see pictured in 165? Yes, ma'am, it is. <clears throat> After processing um, this scene, did you then move to the vehicle? Yes, ma'am. Showing you State's Exhibit 175, is that a view of um, Tamisha Brown's um, white Toyota Corolla that we saw pictured earlier at UF Shands? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What is this? Is this a lift that the car is on? Yes, ma'am. That's the vehicle lift in our warehouse. It allows us to lift the vehicle up so I can examine the undercarriage for bullet strikes and bullet holes. Showing you State's Exhibit 176, um, is that the driver's side of that vehicle? Yes, ma'am, it is. is um, did you document <coughs> the bullet strikes or bullet holes in this car um, in wherever you started and found it? It's not this hit first, this hit second, third? No, ma'am, it's just which one I start with. I start at the rear of the vehicle in this, in this case, and I work my way forward. So the lower numbers are all going to be on the trunk of the vehicle and then the higher numbers as I go forward. Okay, so this, <coughs> this portion of the tire well, just, I'm sorry, just above the tire on the car, um, what bullet hole is that? I believe it was 10. States Exhibit 177, is that help you refresh yes, your mind? That's uh, put an evidence scale there, and you can see it's bullet hole 10. And in this picture, you can see how the projectile entered from the rear of the vehicle towards the front of the vehicle by the way that the divot goes around the hole. You see it goes in, and the, the metal is bent inwards. It digs in, and then it goes in. State Exhibit <coughs> 178, um, does that show how the bullets scrape the paint and into the car? Yes, ma'am, it does. State Exhibit 179. Um, what is photographed here? That is the driver's side rear fender of the vehicle. You can see the shredded tire and the, the marks on the tire. Okay. And at this point in this picture, it's a little bit dark. Um, is the muffler still attached to the car on the driver's side? Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay. Could you erase that? Yes. State's exhibit. <coughs> Stacey said at 180, is that how, the, once you lifted it up, what the tire looked like? Yes, ma'am. You can see how it's shredded and the, the rubber from the tires hanging out what's left of it. Okay. State's exhibit 181. You can um, see. What is that? This is the, the muffler where we've, we've opened it up. Um, here's where the bullet hole entered into the muffler. We had some mechanics help us open the metal of the muffler. And inside, we found a projectile. Okay. Can you circle the, the bullet hole? Okay, and so then you mark this as one. Yes, ma'am. Stacy's exhibit 182. Um, is that the muffler opened up? Yes, ma'am. They've opened it up for us. Where's the projectile? Stacy's exhibit 183. Is that a close view of the projectile? Yes, ma'am, it is. As you found it? Yes, ma'am. State Exhibit 184, um, was that how you found the projectile in that vehicle? Yes, ma'am. I've taken it out and I've photographed it in my hand.
States Exhibit 185, we've seen that view um, of the shattered glass, but it's not a bullet hole um, that we should be paying attention to in that photo. Right up here in the upper right-hand corner of the rear passenger side, that's right where the, the glass and the, the roof of the vehicle meet. Okay. States Exhibit 186, is that a close view of the dowel rod inserted in that bullet hole? Yes, ma'am. Is that that's, bullet hole 8? That is bullet hole 8. And you can see this is the, the headliner from the interior of the vehicle, right there at the, the rear where the window glass is broken. That's the upper where the headliner is. It's going in at that angle from the rear of the vehicle towards the front of the vehicle. States Exhibit 187, um, is there a bullet strike in this um, tail light here? Yes, ma'am. Is that bullet hole 7? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 88, does that show a closer view of that? Yes, ma'am. It's closer up. You can see the, the shattered glass. And if you remember from the scene, we had the, the glass that had the sticker on it. And then there's the defrost marks in the, in the glass. Let me go back to bullet hole um, eight. Did you recover a projectile from there? No, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's been marked 14C for identification. Oh, I correct myself. This bullet hole eight we did. I tracked the bullet that went into bullet hole eight right there where the headliner is. When I removed the headliner, I found this projectile up near the driver's front windshield. So I correct myself on that. Okay. So you did find a projectile yes, as it relates to that? <clears throat> States Exhibit 189, is that a, um, the plastic area, plastic part of that tail light removed with a bullet hole exposed? Yes, ma'am. It's the, the rear deck area. You can see the speakers, the rear speakers on either side. And then your third brake light would be in this area. States Exhibit 190, is that a close view of bullet hole 7? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 191, what portion of the car is that? Well, you can see Detective Whittlesey's hand. This is bullet hole 9, and this is the B pillar on the passenger side of the vehicle. And you can also see where bullet hole 8 went it in, where I found that projectile in the headliner. States Exhibit 192, is that a close view of that bullet hole? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 193, is that a uh, fragment that was recovered from there? Yes, ma'am. It was covered in the interior frame of the B-pillar on the interior side of the vehicle. We removed the plastic seat belt section, and we found that uh, fragment inside of there. Showing you what's been entered in is States Exhibit um, 333. Do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. That's uh, the bullet fragment that is depicted in the photograph on Detective Whittlesey's hand. States Exhibit 194, um, is that a close view of that fragment? Yes, ma'am, it is. States Exhibit 195, is this the overall trunk area of that car? Yes, ma'am, it is. I want to start down in the bottom. Um, is that where you, we had the muffler on the driver's side, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, and then so up from there you went to this um, bullet hole? Yes, ma'am. But as I worked from the bottom up in this case, so that would be one. Bullet hole two is here in the bumper. And then bullet hole three is here in the bumper. Okay. Showing you States Exhibit 196. Is that um, a photograph of bullet hole two? Yes, ma'am. Is that yes? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 197. Is that the host view? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 198. Um, did you? I'm sorry. Did you find any fragment related to bullet hole two? No, ma'am, I did not. Okay. Bullet hole three, 
Um, did this go um, kind of far in the car? Yes, ma'am, it did. All right, so let's track it. State's Exhibit 199, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am, that's where it entered the rear bumper of the vehicle and traveled into the interior of that bumper. State's Exhibit 200, is that the dowel rod? This shows the direction. Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 201, bullet hole 3, is that through the trunk? Yes, ma'am, this is the interior of the trunk where bullet hole 3, as you can see, indicated with the 3 marker, and traveled to where the tire well is. This is the tire well area for the rear passenger tire. It continued in through the tire well. State's Exhibit um, 202, is that a close view of how, where it went into the car? The tire well, I should say? Yes, ma'am. The bumpers here. Oh, sorry. The bumpers in this area traveled through along that line okay. into that tire well. State's Exhibit 203, it, did it go through the tire well into the door? Yes, ma'am. This is the dowel rod where it continued on through the, t the tire well into the door, the C pillar, the door frame of the rear passenger vehicle, passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. State's Exhibit 204, is that a close view of the exit and then entrance back into the car? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 205, is that a close view of the entrance into the door? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 206, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. That's where it in entered the interior plastic of the interior side of the rear passenger door. State's Exhibit 207, did you take that off then and then put the dowel rod through to see where it traveled? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. This is the, where the, the frame is, and it, it continued to travel towards the front of the vehicle from the rear of the vehicle. Okay. State's Exhibit 207, is that a close view of the entrance and then the exit back into the car? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 209, is, it, um, is that the exit from the door back into another part of the car? Yes, ma'am. This is actually the B pillar. Like if you close the door, it's in, on that same plane. It traveled through the rear passenger door and then entered the lower section of the B pillar on the interior side. <clears throat> Okay. Six Exhibit 210, is that the door plastic that you took off with a dowel rod? Yes, ma'am. That's the door panel from the rear passenger door. Six Exhibit 211, is that the exit and then interior to the B pillar that you just described for us? Yes, ma'am. Six, I'm sorry. Six Exhibit 212, is that a close view of that dowel rod? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Six Exhibit 213, is that the exit of the B pillar? Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 214, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am, it is. State's Exhibit 215, what are we looking at here? This is the front passenger floorboard, and you can see where something has struck in the area of the, where your feet would go on the front passenger floorboard. State's Exhibit 216, um, are those the fragments that you recovered along that path? Yes, ma'am, they are. I'm going to show you what's been entered into evidence in State's Exhibit 339. Are these are the fragments, um, the whole part in them, in that. Yes, ma'am, they are. It's the same package as that you see on that envelope there. Okay. Exhibit um, 217. What is this? A portion? What portion of the vehicle is this? This is the rear of the vehicle. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back to bullet strike or bullet hole four. But do we have five in the emblem? Yes, ma'am. Did five carry through the um, car? Yes, ma'am. It did. Two eighteen, a close view of four. But let's talk about five and then six. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Two nineteen, is that five and six? Yes, ma'am. Six is over. Oh, sorry. Six is over here on the near where the key key lock is. Five is in the emblem, and four is in the license plate. Okay. State's exhibit two twenty. Is that a close view of five? Yes, ma'am. It is. The far seat where the Toyota emblem is all the way through. 
backrest to the car seat and an exit on the interior side of the car seat. About where the, the left side of the body would be if it was sitting in the seat. And then, so you mark that with your dowel rods. And then, um, States Exhibit 227, what portion of the trajectory, I'm, I'm sorry, okay. sorry, I forgot, I apologize. States Exhibit 227, um, that dowel rod that's placed through the head of the passenger side headrest, what bullet hole would that relate to? From an area where the car seat five or in the rear window, everything coming from that direction. Okay. States Exhibit 228, did you find a fragment there in that seat? Yes, ma'am. And that's directly in front of the car seat? Directly in front of the car seat. That's the front passenger seat. Showing you States Exhibit 229. Is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. That's the fragment in the, on the seat. Did you collect that? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 230. Did you collect that fragment? And where was that found? You may. <coughs> Continued in a path towards the front of the vehicle, the way the trajectory rod was, it was going from the rear of the vehicle towards the front of the vehicle. If I pass some assistance, please. You may. Yes, ma'am, I did. Yes, ma'am, I did. Um, we're seeing in States Exhibit 226 um, this dowel rod that is in this car seat. This is actually Aiden's car seat, is that right? That is Aiden's car seat that was in the car the night he was, uh, he was killed. And so, um, if, can I have a witness step down? You may. And then um, States Exhibit 227, what portion of the trajectory, I'm sorry, okay. sorry, I forgot, I apologize. States Exhibit 
27, um, that dowel rod that's placed through the head of the passenger side headrest, what bullet hole would that relate to? From an area where the car seat five or in the rear window, everything coming from that direction. Okay. States Exhibit 228, did you find a fragment there in that seat? Yes, ma'am. And that's directly in front of the car seat? Directly in front of the car seat. That's the front passenger seat. Showing you States Exhibit 229, is that a close view of that? Yes, ma'am. That's a fragment in the, on the seat. Did you collect that? Yes, ma'am. Six Exhibit 230, did you collect that fragment, and where was that found? You may. <coughs> All right, uh, Ms. Kite, you may continue. Okay. I was asking if Six Exhibit 230 um, was collected by you. Yes, ma'am. Is that the front passenger floorboard? Yes, ma'am, it is. States Exhibit 231, is that the collection? Yes, ma'am, it's the, the envelope that it's packaged in and the, the scale that we put up next to it. States Exhibit 232, um, we've already talked about one of those bullet holes. Let me move to 233, bullet strike two. Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 234, um, is that documenting that bullet strike that we see here? Yes, ma'am, there is, you can see it right there on the, that is underneath the headrest on the back side of the front passenger seat. Aiden's car seat would be in between that part of the cloth of the seat, and then you would have Aiden and then Aiden's car seat right behind it. States Exhibit 235, um, the view, that is what we have dowel, the dowel rod for in the car seat, does that connect with the bullet strike that we saw there in that headrest? It goes in the direction of that section of the rear seat right underneath the headrest is what the, the dowel rod basically points directly towards that area. Okay. States Exhibit 236. There's a um, bullet hole here. Does that relate back to the bullet hole number four? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's the one in the center of the, the license plate. I'm going to show you what's been admitted into evidence, and these are all the fragments that we've seen by photograph 338, 335, yes ma'am, 334, yes ma'am, and then also 336. Are those all the fragments that you located inside Tanisha Brown's car? Yes ma'am. This is the packaging that was seen in the photos, and then our evidence seals are still in blue on the back. States Exhibit, And as it relates to this composite exhibit, we've already talked about one, which was bullet hole eight, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, this exhibit 14, C 
Chase is at 340. 331 and 340. Um, do you recognize those as the projectiles that we recovered from Tanisha Brown's car? Yes, ma'am. They are. I'm going to keep this one up here, okay? Yes, ma'am. States exhibit. Three eighty nine. Do you recognize this? Yes, ma'am. That's a the license plates on the back of Aiden McClendon's mother's vehicle. You have look, five here, six here, and four in the center of the license plate near the little orange emblem of the Florida license plate. Okay, so this is actually the license plate that was on the back of her car. Yes, ma'am. That's the license plate I removed and brought to you. Okay. And then the. Bullet hole four that relates to the car seat. It looks like it's going to have a witness that thing. She may. On the back of the car seat, was there that bullet hole four? Yes, ma'am. Can you explain to members of the jury why you couldn't get a dowel rod through bullet hole number four? The plastic and it's the projectile is traveling through its hot. And it hits the plastic and building it up, and the heat will actually float it back up a little bit. So you're not going to have the same entrance hole in the back of the seat that you would have in a car in the glass and things like that. It'll actually close that up. The bumpers do the exact same thing. You saw that the bumpers, you see where the please let you put a lighter to some plastic, how it closes back up a little bit. You saw that on one of the holes on the Exhibit 237. Is that a closer view of what you were describing for us of plastic closing up? Yes, ma'am, right here. Okay. Very good, Exhibit 238. Um, you indicated that you that's where the bullet strike that relates back to bullet hole five, the one that was down in the after car seat. Yes, ma'am, that's the front backrest. We're starting to peel back the frame fabric of the front passenger seat to expose any projectiles and fragments. Did you collect that? Yes, ma'am, I did. And showing you, give me just a moment. Hold yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Showing you states exhibit 332. Um, is that the projectile that we see pictured in 238 that you collected? Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay. Thank you.
case exhibit 239 is that a closer view of that yes ma'am that's a close-up of that projectile we just saw in the photograph and that where it's embedded into the foam of the seat did you also collect another um, fragment from the passenger side dash area yes ma'am let me show you But let me remind you, and I'm sure you can guess what I'm about to write for the evening. I'm going to. Uh, of the juries uh, due to the hour and we get a bit more testimony yet with this witness. I don't want to push this too late. I told Joe yesterday we weren't going to go uh, so long every night. So I think it's a good, night, a good time now to break for the evening. I'm going to uh, send your juries to your separate rooms to get your stuff and then send you home. But let me remind you, and I'm sure you can guess what I'm about to say, right? Don't look up at the, any information about the case. Don't talk to anybody about the case. Don't let anybody talk to you about the case. You've heard a lot now. We're well on our way in this trial and making good progress to being uh, finished in a timely fashion. But there's more to come. And you're under oath and your obligation as jurors to not uh, decide anything before you've heard all the evidence and the arguments, the lawyers and the law that I will instruct you on. So follow that instruction, please. That's how you're going to come to a just verdict, whatever verdict that may be. Do get a good night rest tonight because you'll be busy back working tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be back at the same time. I'd say get here about 15, at least 15 minutes early, 8.45 or so. They'll get you up in the jury room, get you a cup of coffee if you'd like one, and then ready to start trial at 9 o'clock, okay? All right, so Mr. Hayes, if you would kindly follow Ms. Galding to your jury room. And Mr. Richardson, if you'd follow Ms. Crawford to yours. And Ms. Crawford, if you could just come back and let me know when they're out, and then I'll send Mr. Hayes out. All right, let the record reflect both juries have left the courtroom. Um, so we we'll, won't be in recess until we get them discharged and on their way. Um, Madam Clerk, if you want to get people up here now, it'd be fine time to do that they're on the way okay um, anything we need to discuss folks on the record before we uh, uh, go off the record all right then we'll be in recess but everybody could just hang tight including uh, mr. Hayes and mr. Richardson until the juries are out well they're going to work on that tonight and fix the evidence list so let me do that later.